the Americans are as aware of this possibility uh, as you are, right? I mean, and, and they've actually gone, um, they've seen threats and plots against the United States continue. Um, why is this still going to happen? Why do you think this, they've continued? Of course, there's continuous political pressure to put, for the soldiers to pull out of Afghanistan. It is the public pressure that is driving the U.S. withdrawal. It is also poor strategy because the Americans should have invested more in Pakistan than in Afghanistan. Because almost all the terrorists, including the leaders, were on the Pakistan side of the Afghan border. And I believe that for the United States to pull out of Afghanistan without stabilizing that country, without creating a force that is able to manage the security of Afghanistan, it is reckless. And I think that it is so important in the next one year for there to be a greater dialogue on the part of the Asian countries on how to stabilize Afghanistan. So Afghanistan to you is the biggest threat to look at in the, in the next, the p biggest potential threat in the coming year? Because it is the epicenter of international terrorism. It is from Afghanistan that 9-11 was staged. Correct. It is from Afghanistan that plots were discussed, plans and preparations were made to hit Bali, to hit JW Marriott in 2003. In fact, the money for the Bali attack came on the instructions of bin Laden, who was on, uh, on the Pakistan side of that border and Khalid Sheikh Mohammed sent the money from Karachi to Thailand, Thailand to Malaysia, Malaysia to Indonesia. So reconstitution of the terrorist sanctuary in Afghanistan will pose a global terrorist threat once again. Let's look at the plots against the United States and the connection to both um, the Middle East, North Africa, and the Philippines. Sorry, I'm going to dump all of this at you. In one. Social media? has been a way that terrorists around the world have congregated, have pulled together. A man was arrested in the Philippines in March of 2012, and he said he was planning, he was going to join AQAP in Yemen. AQAP actually led the plots in 2009, the underwear bombing plot, and in 2010, the printer plot. Uh, and in 2012, last year, when, when their bomb maker tried to put uh, the bomb inside the body cavity of a human being, the CIA foiled that plot. But you're seeing different elements from all around the world coming together with this very virulent ideology, with the United States still the potential target. How is, why, the first is, how is the United States dealing with that? And second, how do you prevent them from continuing to recruit on a new medium, social media. U.S. has invested a lot and is working with several partners in the Arabian Peninsula, both with the Saudi intelligence services and with the Yemeni services to detect and disrupt the threat of Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, AQAP, or yes. AQAP, yes. mounting attacks against the West. AQAP is different from the other Al-Qaeda associate groups because it's a direct extension of central Al-Qaeda. In many ways, the center of gravity of terrorist operations have shifted from Al-Qaeda central, led by Ayman al-Zawahiri, to Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula. And this group is today posing the most significant threat to the US, to the Europeans, and to even to Africa, because AQAP is also doing some operations in Somalia. Right. And if Filipino intelligence is to be believed, they're also recruiting Filipinos to join AQAP in Yemen. Yes, because we have seen that number of foreign nationals who are in, uh, in Saudi Arabia, Yemen has been approached. Traditionally, there have been even Australians who have been working for AQAP in Yemen. And AQAP key leaders have been killed, but there are still a number of operatives. AQAP is largely a Saudi and a Yemeni organization, but they have moved from Saudi to Yemen because of sustained counterterrorism operations by the Saudis. Correct. I would say that today, looking at the tier of organizations around Al-Qaeda Central, AQAP and AQIM, Al-Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb, the group that is operating in North Africa, these two groups pose a very significant threat. But there are other groups, like Al-Qaeda in Iraq, right. like Al-Nusra Front in Syria, which is an extension of Al-Qaeda in Iraq. These groups are also very significant groups. So the threat from these groups have not died. 
the threat from these groups will persist in the long term. How do you deal with this evolving threat? It looks like it's mutated and actually expanded, right? May perhaps not as strong as the centralized Al-Qaeda was in, in uh, a decade, more than a decade ago that carried out 9-11, but how do you deal with this mutating threat today? Central Al-Qaeda was very highly capable because they had the best minds. They drew the cream from the anti-Soviet multinational Afghan Mujahideen campaign. But if you look at these other groups, they are not as capable as AQ Central, but still able to inflict very significant damage. They can blow up a plane. Yes. They can conduct a coordinated simultaneous attack against a transportation target. They can kill a president or a prime minister of a country. So still they are capable. And that is why it is so important for the international community to work together to stabilize conflict zones like Yemen, like Afghanistan, like Somalia, like Mali, because it is from this conflict zone that there, there is new ideologies that have been produced, new, new and experienced fighters have been produced, and also the justification emerges for terrorists to attack the US, their allies, and their friends. It's, it sounds like it's a much more complex threat world, threat matrix, than it was more than a decade ago. Um, with what just happened in the United States in the last few days, how would you gauge uh, the West's ability to deal with this mutating threat? Western countries uh, are facing many difficulties because of financial uh, crisis. And you can see the center of economic power is now shifting to Asia. Correct. Asian countries also must take the responsibility. They should not allow just the West to act. Western nations are not going to invest money and invest their, their lifeblood, their treasure, fighting terrorism in faraway theaters. Yes. They will, American army is downsizing its strength. Okay. Of course, American special operations forces are expanding in strength, intelligence services are expanding. So I believe as a result of their failures in Iraq and Afghanistan, Western nations in future will not send large armies to fight. They will send their drones, they will send their special operators. Mm -hmm. Special operators are trained to fight and they are also specialized to train others. Sometimes they fight and train, do the same. They conduct influence operations, they conduct uh, civil affairs, engaging people. So they are much more capable than large armies. But again, there are some theaters you need large formations on the ground. And if you don't have those formations, you cannot sustain the areas that have been cleared in the initial phase of uh, counter-insurgency, counter-terrorist operations. But I believe the Americans should work with the Indians, with the Russians, with the Chinese, of course, with the Europeans as well to stabilize these conflict zones. They themselves, the Americans themselves, and the Europeans themselves can't fight uh, the, the, the conflict, can't stabilize the conflict zones that are in Asia, Africa, and the Middle East. There needs to be greater partnerships with those countries that are now emerging as economic powers. That mind shift hasn't happened, though. We're not seeing that from the leaders of the countries. No, because the United States has is now occupied with China, with rising China. And I, I personally don't think China will pose a big threat to, to the US or to the rest of the world. Uh, certainly, they should engage China at this point to look at the other threats that present a, a more day-to-day -day threat. China may be a strategic threat in the long term, but, but right now, the biggest threat, global threat nations are facing is from two things. One is from terrorism. Second is from missile and fissile proliferation with the developments in North Korea, in Iran. Correct. But I think that if these big countries, major powers are not going to work together, we will have more terrorists and we will have more proliferators. Incredible. What about the threat of the internet? I mean, we've both been in conferences where people talk about the, the new battlefield as both, for both criminals and terrorists is the internet. What's happening there? Internet is a very important tool because it has em empowered a lot of poor people. It has, uh, it has enabled us to fight illiteracy. It's, it's a magic weapon. 
but it also has been used by those who are weak to attack those who are powerful. Internet is today the principal mean medium of communication by terrorists and extremist groups. It's also one of the key media, me, media for terrorist groups to uh, raise funds. It's also a very important medium for recruitment, for radicalizing, politicizing, mobilizing their supporters. Internet needs to be policed. You cannot allow people to post what they want on the internet because we have seen a number of extremist groups are using the net to reach out to their supporters, to radicalize, to recruit people, to indoctrinate them and get them to go and do terrorist attacks. So the service providers and others, other stakeholders needs to be more responsible.